Dear Patrons, welcome to a deck tech video requested by Thomas Sword. It's about his Kenriff deck. In this video, we're gonna review his deck, gonna come some with some suggestions, and talk a little bit about it in general. This deck reminds me a lot of my Kenriff Cantrip Control deck, except this deck doesn't have any cantrips, but it's doing a very similar thing. We have Underworld Breach down here, then we have Lion's Eye Diamond, and obviously, of course, we have the where is it? Ariok Salvagers. And if you don't know how this combo actually functions, is that you're able to fill your graveyard really huge, and then use a demonic tutor, any tutor of some sort. We have a gamble. Yeah, we have a gamble here. Obviously a great card for this combo. So you can tutor for Underworld Breach, cast it, then cast your tutor from your graveyard, find Lion Sign Diamond, and then cast Lion Sign Diamond a bunch to gain some mana, then cast your tutor again, everything possible with Underworld Breach, and you find Ariok salvagers and from here you have the bomberman combo and then you win the game with infinite mana from kenriff clean and simple so that brings us to how this deck is filling the graveyard because with underworld breach you don't care what cards are ending up in your graveyard you just want a really huge grave and thomas is doing that with wheels wheel of fortune windfall and and of course narset so this and of course there's a notion thief in here yeah obviously and there should be a smothering tide yes so this is very similar as well to the opius thief wheel deck so this is the king thief the uh, wheel king you could call it i guess that immediately takes us to a few cards i think you might be missing first up we have waste not a black enchantment that is going to generate a lot of triggers when you're forcing three opponents to discard their entire hands so whenever an opponent has got a creature card you get a 2-2 black zombie that is kind of good. You could buff those with your Kenriff and you can give them haste and you can give them trample and stuff like that. Whenever they discard a land card, you gain two black mana. And whenever they discard a non-creature, non-land card, you draw a card and that is the big profit you want to have. Also, Compost, a green enchantment that the Opus Thief don't play because it's green, but you have access to green because Kenriff is all five colors. So this is definitely something you should consider. So whenever a black card is put into your opponent's grave, you may draw a card. This means that if you're activating, let's say, Ashiok, and you flip into, let's say, two black cards, those cards are going to end up in your graveyard from anywhere, and Compost will actually trigger. Even though they are being put from your the library into the grave, Compost will still trigger for each one of those black cards, and then the cards go exile after uh, during their Ashiok resolve. But also, if an opponent casts, let's say, a Demonic Tutor, a Vampiric Tutor, Compost will also draw a card, so there's a huge benefit from that thing. And when you wheel, they discard their entire hand, and they might discard a few black cards, and then this is going to trigger a lot. I also think you should consider having, uh, let's go see here, Riley, the Everwise, inside your deck. It's a, gonna be a really explosive draw engine for you if you cast your Wheel of Fortune, and let's say you discard five cards, then she's gonna trigger and let you draw five more cards that turn. Also, I think she's gonna be pretty big inside the stick and with Kenriff you could give her trample and even increase her toughness by putting plus one percent counters on her so she could definitely be that secondary win con by beating your opponent's face if the game goes to that strange scenario while she's also a really strong card drawing engine for a deck like this. Well, we have some more combos inside this deck. We have Odd Nauseam and Angel's Grace together. So Odd Nauseam is definitely a strong card in general. Your CMC rate inside this deck is really low and that's good. So you're probably going to be able to fuel a really big Odd Nauseam, potentially drawing into Lion's Eye Diamond and Ariok Salvagers. But the win chance becomes 100% if you have an Angel's Grace. Because with that, you could simply just cast Angel's Grace and draw your entire deck. And from there, you only need some fast mana like Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, Mana Crypt, cast your Underworld Breach, then cast Lion's Eye Diamond, and then you have the complete win. You, you can basically sit there and exile cards from your graveyard to cast Lion's Eye Diamond over and over. Eventually, or you could actually just cast Kenriff and reanimate uh, the Ariok Salvager actually as well in that case. Or you could use Spell the Fastest Oracle to win the game. And here's where I've noticed that you're lacking a few other cards. You have Fastest Oracle, but you don't have Demonic... You have Demonic Consultation, sorry, but you don't... Yeah, you didn't have the Tainted Pact. I definitely think you should have Tainted Pact. If you can have either Demonic Consultation or Tainted Pact, I would highly recommend 
having Tainted Pact instead. I'm guessing you're not playing Tainted Pact because of budget reasons, but Tainted Pact is just so stronger. I've actually played Tainted Pact in a few decks, even though I don't have a Fastest Oracle inside that deck. And to make an example, here I have my Kenrif Cantrip Control deck, and I have the Tainted Pact, but if you look at the creatures, you can notice that I don't play any Fazas Oracle whatsoever, because Tainted Pact will function something like a tutor. You cast it, and hopefully you might find Underworld Breach before you grab your Lion's Eye Diamond, or your Ariok Salvager. So you could fizzle, but in general I think Tainted Pact is a really good tutor that is going to do some form of job. It's also in instant speed you could cast it and potentially find a negate to interact with your opponents. And that is really good. But I absolutely understand if you don't play Tainted Pact because of budget reason. That card has gotten really expensive. So let's talk about a few other cards you have inside this deck. Echo of Eons. And I guess you're playing it because of budget reasons. I mean, Time Twister is really expensive, so I can definitely see that. And you have a Smothering Tide inside the deck, you have a Notion Thief inside the deck, and you have a Narset inside the deck. So you have a lot of synergies for this spell. But I think you should cut it for two reasons, or let's say replace it. The first reason is you're gonna make your Ad Nauseam a little bit weaker with a really high CMC of 6 on this thing. Also, secondary, you're gonna make your Underworld Breach combo a little bit less functional. With Underworld Breach you wanna have a huge grave, you don't care whatsoever what your grave consists of, but with Echo of Eons you're shrinking your grave, you're rebuilding your deck, and you don't really really need to rebuild because Kendriff can reanimate creatures from your grave, so in general you wanna have a huge grave. So I think you could replace this with, let's say, a Whisper of Madness or any other Windfall variant. Other cards I might cut in this deck is, for example, Trinket Mage. Yes, you could definitely use Trinket Mage to find Lions and Diamond, and also Mana Crypt. I guess Trinket Mage is a really good budget card in general for this deck, but in the future there are gonna be better tutors for this deck. You also have a lot of tutors. You have Lindul's Vault, you have Enlightened Tutor, you have the Demonic Consultation is something of a tutor. A very weird tutor. I don't think you can use this, by the way, for any tutor effect, but it's something. You have Muddle the Mixture, you have a Mystical Tutor, so I think you have enough. You don't... you have Demonic Tutor, you have Gamble, you could include um, the Demonic... Uh, Diabolic Intent. I definitely think you could replace Trinket Mage with Diabolic Intent, and I also think you could cut Sensei's Divining Top. Sensei's Divining Top is a cute card, and it, it's, it's enjoyable to have it, Ah, uh, it's a personal choice, I guess. If you keep, when I keep Sensei Divine on top, you could do. I don't really like it because I think you basically just wasting mana in general when you could use your mana to draw cards instead. You have. I want to talk about Astra Oddsmaker. I think Astra Oddsmaker is a great card for Kenrith because you can reanimate the creatures that the Astra Oddsmaker is putting into your grave. But this isn't really a reanimator deck. This would be really good if you're including Riley the Everwise because this is another discard trigger outlet for you. So Riley could grow in potential. So if you want to have this thing, I should definitely think you should have Riley. One more thing I've been thinking about inside this deck is the amount of combos you actually have inside. You have Fasus Oracle, Demonic Consultation, you have Ad Nauseam and Angel's Grace. Ad Nauseam is a really good card in general, and Angel's Grace is quite good now versus the mirror matchups of Fasas Oracle. So I definitely think this is a genius combo to have inside this deck. Then you have your Underworld Breach, Lion's Eye Diamond, and Ariok Salvagers. I don't think you have too much. I think you're fine. I definitely think you should increase your combo package with a Tainted Pact in the future to make the Fasus Oracle, the Mono Consultation, stronger. And I think all of these combos functions really well together. But you might be sitting home and thinking about including some more combos inside a stick. For example, you have a Bloom Tender. You could include Faber or Elder. I definitely think you should include Faber Elder. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed about that card. It's a great card in general. It's gonna help you out a lot. Now, you could include Freed from the Reel, you don't have that, and some other variations to Freed from the Reel, because with that you can gain infinite mana, except you can't gain infinite blue mana. And with in without infinite blue mana, you can't force your opponents to draw their deck, and you can't draw your own deck, so you have to win with infinite green, infinite white, and if you have infinite red, you can also gain Trample and Haste to all your creatures, but you're, you can't always kill all of your opponents, so that isn't a genius auto-include combo for Kendriff the same way it is a really good combo for Frasius that can win the game from infinite colorless mana. 
so that's a big difference. And I think this deck would be hurt uh, a lot by including more combos inside. You have enough, I think. If we look at the land base, we have Arid Misa, Blood Crypt, Bloodstained Mire, Breeding Pool, City of Brass, Command Tower, Drowned Yard, Catacombs, Exotic, Flooded, Forbidden, Glacial, Godless, Hallowed, Island, Mana, Confluence, Overgrown Tomb, Plain, Sacred, Silent Clearing. Great card in general. You can sacrifice this and draw a card. I actually don't like these lands when you're playing Kendriff or a commander that's able to just fuel from mana because I have found that I'm I'm rarely sacrificing them because I rather have them to tap them to draw cards with my Kendriff instead. So I could re I would probably replace this personally. Snow Covered Island. That's great because now we have one basic island and now we have a secondary island. Still and you don't have a tainted pack. You've you've built your deck around being able to play tainted pack, but you don't have tainted pack. So I guess that that's uh, going to happen in the future. Spire Garden, Steam Vent, Stomping Ground. Sulfur Falls. This is a secondary sack land to draw a card. Uh, I, these cards are great. Uh, don't take me wrong. It's just that I personally don't like them together with a commander like Kenriff. And you have some other good stuff in general. So I think your mana base is really good. 31 lands. I think you could go lower to 30 because with your wheels and with your card draw in general, with your fast mana, you're definitely gonna get going. You could actually increase the amount of dorks you have. You have a few of them. You have Avacyn's Pilgrim, and you have a bird, you have a Bloom Tender, Deathrite. Deathrite is the best one. I think you could increase the amount of uh, dorks, actually. So maybe shrink the land count by maybe one and add in a dork. I think that would increase your speed. But let me show you an how to include land for this deck. Cephalid's Consolium. So, you can tap it for one blue mana, that is great, that is basically something of an island. It will take a damage though, that's okay I guess. But if you have Threshold 7 cards inside your graveyard, you can tap one blue mana, tap this and sacrifice it, and the target player draws 3 cards and then discards 3 cards. This is usually used to targeting yourself to loot through your deck. But with a Notion Thief in play, you can force one player to draw three cards, but with Notion Thief, you're the one drawing those cards. That player will still discard three cards, so it's just genius. It's draw three cards, target player discards three cards. Mwah, beautiful. Also, if you have your Riley in play, this is going to draw three cards, discard three cards, draw three cards. You're looking at six cards and you're going through your deck so quickly. So I definitely think this is a card you should have inside your deck. It's uh, it's just a basic, it taps for blue mana still, so it's great. Thomas, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support. I hope this video brought you something, some inspiration in how you can take this deck further.